Good morning. If you're happy and you know it, say amen. I'm Pastor Jeff. Welcome to M1 on this second Sunday of July 2024. It's good to have you here. And it's also good to have our special guest with us this uh, morning all the way from Nairobi or Kenya. Nairobi, Kenya. <laughs> Russ and Carla uh, Frazier, let's make them welcome here at M1. They're going to be bringing the message in just a little while. Uh, but if you're visiting with us today, oh, also, uh, we want to support our missionaries. And so out in the foyer, uh, you saw plates. Uh, we want to give them a love offering uh, before they leave. So on your way out, make sure to drop in something. Uh, you're so generous in, in so many ways. So let's give them a, a good love offering from M1 this morning. If you're visiting with us today, uh, there are guest cards in the pew in front of you. If you'll fill that out and then after the service, come back to the info desk and we'd love to give you a, an appreciation gift and get to know you. Um, I also want to take time uh, to thank a couple of people this week. We weren't sure if we were going to have a fair booth. We found out that we were going to have a fair booth and last minute they stepped up and took care of our fair booth this week. So can we... Thank Deanna and Hugh Steinbrook for running our M1 Fair booth this week. Thank you, guys. I know you don't want it, but thank you so much. That was a blessing, sharing good uh, Jesus with our community. Announcements. Tomorrow, we have our monthly food and fellowship. It'll be at Texas Corral at 11 a.m. If you're able to make it, we encourage you to come and have lunch with us. Um, and then, new announcement. We only have 164 days until Christmas. But Martinsville, uh, July 25th, 26th, they're going to have uh, Christmas in July downtown. And one of the things they're going to be doing, the Candy Kitchen, which is an incredible place, uh, if you make a purchase and donate a pantry item, you get a free candy cane. The thing about that is the pantry item will be going to the M1 Food Pantry, all the, the donated items. So... Uh, let's support not only the candy kitchen and have fun with Christmas in July, but support our food pantry and uh, just make a difference. So uh, any donation uh, will be accepted and it all goes to the M1 food pantry. The next membership class will be in a couple weeks, July 28th at 4 p.m. If you're new to M1, interested in finding out more about this, this special place um, and would like you're interested in becoming a member, uh, sign up. And if you have any questions, please see me, and I'll be glad to answer those questions. Most of us know yesterday our nation experienced an attack from the enemy of our souls. He carried out another plot of his game plan, and his game plan is to kill, steal, and destroy. But we don't put our trust in the enemy of our souls, do we? Our hope is in Jesus Christ, our Savior, our champion, and our protector. Can we get an amen on that? We put our trust and hope in him, and we know that he will always see us through. 2 Timothy 1.12 says, I know whom I have believed, and am persuaded that he is able to keep that which I have committed to him against that day. We serve a mighty God, and that's why we're gathered here today. No matter what's happening around the world, Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever, and he's worthy of all of our praise. So if you will, let's stand and sing that song, Praise the Lord. I'll praise in the valley, praise on the mountain. I'll praise when I'm sure. Grace when I'm doubting. I'll praise when I'm numbered. Grace when surrounded. Because grace is the water my enemies drown. As long as I'm breathing, I've got a reason to pray. Oh, 
my 
go before us. Nothing can stand against the power of our God. You shine in the shadows. You win every battle. Nothing can stand against the power of our God. Almighty fortress, you go before us. Nothing can stand against the power of our God. You shine in the shadows. You win every battle. Nothing can stand against the power of church all around us right now are battles being waged we are in a mess if you would if to, to, so to speak but we live in the greatest country in the world and we know that God is still in control and he is still answering our prayers today and it's his battle not ours we just lift our hands and say God you can take care of it we're trusting you Amen? We have our prayer jar over here. We invite you to come. If you've had an answer to prayer this week, come put a gem in, and we will, we will celebrate the answer to prayer. And in the meantime, greet your neighbors. And let them know you're glad to see them. Amen. It's good to be in the house of the Lord, isn't it? And it's good to be part of a church family. 
One of the things we like to do is recognize uh, accomplishments and uh, life achievements. Tomorrow, one of our uh, friends, one of our, one of my appointed uh, quartet, Big Brothers, is achieving something in his life. He's going to be 7,700 years old. <laughs> Wait. 77 years old. And so Michael, come up here. It's his birthday. Can we give Mike uh, a, a happy birthday applause? We love you, Michael. Okay. There you go. Okay. So wish him a happy birthday. I, I thought about bringing out my paddle, but man, we'd be here till 2 o'clock. <laughs> Happy birthday, Michael. We love you. We do appreciate it. Um, this morning we're focusing on missions. And it is good to have the Frasers with us. Um, but missions is not just another country, another place. Uh, sometimes it's in our backyard or across the street or with someone we do business with. Um, the purpose of follow one of the things that we have here at M1, one of our purposes is to go, go into all the world, and, and Martinsville is our mission field, and if there's ever a time we needed to be sharing the good news of Jesus, it's right now. A verse I, that came to my mind and just slipped it in this morning is 2 Chronicles seven fourteen. We all know it, but it applies so well. If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face, and turn from their wicked ways. Then, and this is our prayer, isn't it? Then we'll hear from heaven. And God will forgive their sin and he will heal our land. We need to continue to pray for our nation. Yes, pray for the, um, the former President Trump that he'll be healed and his family. But also I hope we're praying for President Biden and his family. For our local, state, and national leaders. That they would hear the voice of God and that they would trust him with the direction and future of our nation. And so what we need to do is to call on the God of David, call on the God of Moses, call on the God of Mary, and ask him to come and do what only he can do, and that's transform lives through the good news of Jesus Christ. Stand and let's sing that, that song, Same God.
Jesus from the mountains, Jesus in the streets, Jesus in the darkness over every enemy. Jesus for my family, I speak the holy name of Jesus. 
so thankful for the name of Jesus, the one who came and gave his life so that we could have forgiveness of sin and eternal life ourselves. Lord, we thank you for your presence here this morning. We thank you for the hope that we can place in you. You said you would never leave us alone or as orphans or forsake us. And Lord, you are so faithful and so worthy of all of our praise. We thank you for this week that you've brought us through. Thank you for uh, watching over uh, former President Trump last night. Half an inch could have made a different, we would be in a different day today. But God, you're able to take care of your children. You're able to take care of your nation. We thank you for this church. Thank you for where we're at and what you're doing in our midst. You know the needs represented here. Lord, we we pray for Marvin Stanton, that you would touch his body and let him be infection-free and healed completely. We pray for uh, Michael McKee and Michael Hargis. And you know our prayer list, Lord. You know each uh, specific situation. We believe that you're still able to heal all sickness and all diseases. Lord, you're able. And so we pray that you'll reveal yourself in each situation. Be with those who have had procedures and are recovering and healing up and going through therapy. Lord, you know those who are carrying a, a weight of anxiety or pressure. You said to come unto me, all ye who are weak and heavy laden, and that you would give us rest. I pray that you would lighten the load for some today. today. Let them sense your presence and let us know that you've got it. You're going to see us through. You won't take us where you won't keep us. And so uh, let your presence just give us blessed assurance this morning. And I lift up Russ and Carla Frazier. Thank you for uh, the time when they came in their lives where they said, yes, Lord, yes, to your will and to your way. Wherever you wanted to send them, they were willing to go. And they've been around this world sharing the good news of Jesus. And their journey today has brought them to Martinsville, Indiana, to the M1 Church family. So we pray right now that you would just anoint them in a very special way with the, the, what you've laid upon their hearts. And use this time uh, to let us realize that you're God, not just here, but around the world. And that we have a responsibility to do all that we can to, to go into all the world and make disciples and baptize and teach them about your love and who you are. Bless this time in Jesus' name we pray and believe. And all God's people said, you may be seated. At this time, I'm going to introduce Russ and Carla Frazier and uh, let them have the platform. So let's make them welcome once more. great to be with you this morning and thank you for that time of worship that was just so meaningful to me and we just need to speak the name of Jesus he, he will be with us and 
he'll uh, be there in all our situations. We are Russ and Car Carla Frazier, and we serve as global missionaries with the Church of the Nazarene. And currently we are in, located in Nairobi, Kenya, in East Africa. And um, let me think there's a PowerPoint, but it's okay if it doesn't come yet. Um, our, the main campus of the university where we live is located in the Maasai Plains, about 15 miles outside of Nairobi. It is a beautiful campus, and we're in close proximity to um, a national park, a game reserve for wild animals. So we have seen lots of animals around close by, and more recently, too close. <laughs> and um, we um, have lived in three different countries in Africa. In 1999, we lived in Abidjan, Cote d'Ivoire, and we learned French there. And then in 2005, I mean, 1999 to 2005, we moved to Kigali, Rwanda, and worked with uh, not only Rwanda, but De Democratic Republic of the Congo and Burundi. And since 2014, we have lived and served in Africa, Nazarene University in, in Nairobi, Kenya. I work in the finance office. I am an assistant accountant, and I uh, serve students in receivables, and uh, work with a work-study program and the scholarships for students. Uh, Russ is a senior lecturer in the School of Religion and Christian Ministries. Um, he teaches students at the bachelor's, master's, and doctoral levels. He also supervises a large number of students' uh, theses, and he serves in numerous committees. Uh, he's a bit hard to tie down, but he is involved in numerous ministries outside of the university. And most recently is involved in shaping um, the vision for a new educational system for French speakers. And <clears throat> the institution is called uh, FATAN, or Faculty de Théologie de l'Église de Nazarene. Um, ANU has impacted a large number of English-speaking countries in Africa, but FATEN will um, concentrate on the French-speaking uh, countries. And both of these together um, institutions have a pan-African reach. We consider ourselves pan-African missionaries. Our family. We have two children who live in the U.S. Our daughter, Rochelle, and her husband, Joe, live in California. And we have two granddaughters, Evie six and Maddie is four, three and our son Seth lives here in Indiana in Westfield area with his wife Chelsea and uh, we they have a son Beckett and a daughter Sutton so we uh, I have seen them already um, the, these two uh, but uh, grandkids, grandkids are pretty special and we really enjoy them I will turn it over you and thank you for inviting us to come and to share with you and uh, we are just uh, delighted to be able to worship with you um, what a joy it is for us to to be with you here today I'm going to ask you if you would to turn with me if you have your Bibles uh, turn to Amos I'll give you just a, a moment to find uh, that that book a book in the Old Testament but I think it's one of those passages of Scripture that is very familiar to us. It's one that rings in, uh, in our hearing. Uh, Amos chapter 5 and verse 24. Amos chapter 5 verse 24. If you have your Bible and uh, have it open or have your have it open on your phone uh, I just encourage you to keep it open there for just a few minutes because I'm going to be referring to the book of Amos Amos chapter 5 verse 24 but let justice roll down like waters and righteousness like an ever flowing 
Have, have you ever found yourself in the Bible? Uh, you, you, maybe you've uh, found meaning and purpose as, as you were reading a passage of, of Scripture. You found your meaning, uh, your reason for existing in life. It was on February 2nd, 2023, uh, Reverend Sikande Sabanda uh, preached in the chapel service at Africa Nazarene University. And the sermon and prayers that day uh, made an impact upon me in that particular service. She referred to the text that I have just read. But let justice roll down like waters and righteousness like an ever-flowing stream. I was deeply moved in that particular service. Um, the sermon and prayers made me realize that I am somewhat of a, a justice warrior. I, I tend to see things in, in black and white. Uh, anybody else like that? Yeah, very much so. That's me. Uh, you know, if something is wrong, I want to try to correct the wrong. I want to try to correct the injustice. I, I like fighting for the underdog. And I, I really have found a comrade in Amos. Amos was a, a justice warrior. One of the common themes of his prophecy was the ruler's injustice toward the poor and weak in Israel. And I think Amos chapter 4 verse 1 is really representative of that of that theme. He's, he writes there, Hear this word, you cows of Bashan, who are on the mountain of Samaria, who oppress the poor, who crush the needy, who say to your husbands, Bring that we may bring, drink. Farmer Amos turns prophet. The herdsman has the, the nerve to become God's mouthpiece. The, this... Uh, this man who was a, known as a dresser of sycamore trees uh, dares to become a preacher. And he has the guts to call out sin, even sin in high places. Above all places, even the palace itself. He's not afraid, but he courageously speaks the truth. Amen. So Amos was that kind of preacher. I don't know if you've read the book of Amos. It's probably not one of those books that we turn to frequently. But I don't know if you've read his opening lines. But if you look in Amos chapter 1, you'll see that Amos is using a particular literary device. Uh, he's using a a particular literary device to signal his intention. He repeats something eight times in chapters 1 and 2. The phrase that he repeats eight times is this phrase, Thus says the Lord, for three transgressions of, and then he will name the city or the country, uh, and for four I will not revoke the punishment because... He begins, with, first of all, with the, the very distant neighbors of Israel and Judah. He first begins with Damascus. Look there in, in, in verse 3. Thus says the Lord, for three transgressions of Damascus and for four. You see? And then he moves in just a little closer to, to Gaza. And then in verse 6, and then in Tyre in verse 9, and then Edom in uh, chapter 1, verse 11. And then the Ammonites in chapter 1, verse 13. And Moab in chapter 2, verse 1. Judah in 2, verse 4. Israel in 2, verse 6. And right at this particular point, uh, the Israelites are saying, Go to it. Preach it, man. You're doing a great job. They're excited, about, uh, they're excited about what this preacher has to say. But then Amos circles around again. 
and they're not quite so excited at this particular point. He comes around at this point to Judah and Israel, and they become angry with Amos at this point, no doubt. Get, get this man out of here. Who is he to speak to us? He's, he's nothing but a farmer. He has no right to speak to us. But Amos is just bold enough to prophesy judgment on the self-serving worship of the people. He said, in essence, you people are just playing games with God. You come to church just to be seen. You show up to church uh, to, to enhance your own reputation. You want to enhance your own self-esteem and your own standing in the community. You don't come to worship God, he says, or glorify God. You just come to boost your own ego. But the mouthpiece of God, Amos, reports God as saying, in chapter 4, verse 4, Come to Bethel and transgress, to Gilgal, and multiply transgressions. Bring your sacrifices every morning and your tithes every three days. He says, in, in essence, come to the house of God and sin. Come to the place of God, to come to the place of worship and heap sins upon sin. You see, in Amos' day, what was taking place is this. The small farmer was charged an exorbitant amount of money for the rental of the land. The wealthy were charging more than a fair share of the crop from the harvest. And so Amos tells them in essence, worship is not what you do on Sunday. Worship is not just what you do on the seventh day. Worship is what you do on the other six days as well. Amen? What you do on the other six days may actually undermine what you do on the day of worship. And so Amos calls these people back to true worship. He calls them back to return to God. The, the prophet Micah, I think, put it very well in his prophecy. He said, he has told you, O man, what is good and what does the Lord require of you but to do justice and to love kindness and to walk humbly with your God. Like Amos, I see a lot of injustices in the world in which I live. And I think uh, as, we, as we reflect on this world, I think the injustices have proliferated in the United States in the midst of the ongoing uh, uh, social change that we see taking place in front of us. Despite uh, the crumbling uh, foundations, as Mike said this morning, America is one of the most prosperous countries on the earth. But at the same time, there are many other regions of the world that are languishing in poverty and suffer from uh, this Western-centric focus. There are a lot of hot spots in the world. There are... The Middle East is one. The Ukraine-Russian war, Haiti's descent into total chaos, among many others. But I'm here today to talk to you about Africa. It's a place that I love. It's a place that has become home to us. Many of you may think that Carla and I represent only Kenya. We live in Kenya, but as she mentioned a little, a little bit ago, our heart is really much broader. Our heart is pan-African. It extends to the entire continent of Africa. It, uh, in, it often has us asking the, the question, how can we impact a continent, uh, the continent of Africa, through the gospel of Jesus Christ? 
how can, how can we make an impact upon Africa? And I think you'll see as uh, hopefully we'll have a, a video a little bit later, but the video shows how Africa Nazarene University is making an impact upon different, upon different countries throughout Africa. Something we're excited about. We're grateful that the university is not just training Kenyans, but it is also training other nationalities, uh, people from different nationalities throughout Africa. But Carla and I continue to wrestle with this question, how can we make an impact upon the continent? How can we address some of the inequities that exist within our world? One of my responsibilities, I think, today is to inform you of some of the challenges that we face across Africa and around the world. And one of the first injustices that I want to share with you this morning has to do with uh, some very recent events. Some of you may be aware that Africa or Kenya has faced a number of different challenges in the last few weeks. Carla and I left Kenya in the middle of May. Uh, the global, global missions granted us a sabbatical, and we're very grateful for that. So we left Kenya after the semester ended um, in the middle of May. Carla came back to the U.S. and spent uh, the, this time up until now uh, with family and, and friends. I spent my time in the U.K. Um, doing some research. But before we left, before we left Kenya, there were a lot of concerns, even complaints about the rising cost of taxes and inflation within the country. We heard the complaints of the common people who were struggling to sur survive. The government of Kenya proposed a, a finance bill in the parliament to increase taxes to address um, billions of, of dollars in debt, to pay off the debt and to fund development projects. But there was a widespread reaction to that announcement uh, on social media and to the parliament's passing of that particular bill. People were mobilized in mass through social media, especially among the youth, and peaceful pro protests began in Nairobi, the capital of, of Kenya, on June 18. However, despite of all of the protests, the bill passed on June 20, uh, uh, on, on June 19. And uh, then on June 25th, protesters stormed the parliament building and set part of the parliament building on fire. Um, in reaction to that, the president, Ruto, uh, vetoed the bill. He fired most of his cabinet members and had some online conversations with some of the pro protesters. Over 20 people have been killed and over 200 persons were injured. And just this weekend, in fact, Friday and Saturday of, uh, that is uh, Friday uh, and, and Saturday, yesterday, 11 body bags were discovered in Kwari a, um, at a dump site near a police station. My point is to make you aware of what is going on in Kenya. My point is to ask you to pray, to pray with me, to pray with us. Let justice flow down like waters and righteousness like a never flowing stream. Thankfully, we don't know of anyone that has been hurt, connected with the church or the university. 
Um, as a matter of fact, one of my colleagues in the School of Religion and Christian Ministry pastors one of our local churches there in Kenya, and they had this morning a service praying for healing in the nation of Kenya. Let's pray with them. Will you pray with me these words, these words of Amos, over the country of Kenya? Let justice roll down like waters and righteousness like an ever-flowing stream. But there is a second injustice that I want to share with you today, and that has to do with the ongoing war in the Democratic Republic of Congo. The war has been going on for 20 years. As Carla mentioned, uh, she and I lived and worked in Rwanda, but worked also in the Democratic Republic of Congo. Um, and we are still connected uh, with the Congolese people. Um, one of my students at the university, a young man, a small stature, his name is Trezor Madeleine. He's one of our students. He's 27 years of age. He once stated to me, some of us have never known peace. It's tragic. Uh, some, someone may ask, well, why has the war been going on for so long? What is the source of conflict? The war is centered in uh, the uh, Ituri and North Kivu provinces of the, of the country. The neighboring countries want to control the riches, the, the mineral riches of Congo, uh, the gold, uh, the diamond, and the cobalts. Over 120 military groups have fought in eastern Congo. And they're fighting for the control of riches. Nearly 5.6 million people have been displaced across the country in the last uh, little more than a year now. More than 1.6 million in Ituri and more than 1.8 million in North Kivu provinces alone. The problem of interdisplaced people is not the only crisis. The Democratic Republic of Congo has been called the rape capital of the world. A non-government organization reported several years ago that 75% of all rape cases it deals with worldwide were in eastern Congo. The world seemingly does not know or doesn't care about the atrocities of this war. The ongoing war does not figure into uh, the international news. It seems that the world does not care. But 5.4 million people have died in this war. The world's deadliest war in the world since World War II. And yet no one seems to care. But today I'm here to ask you to care. I believe you do. And I'm asking you to pray with me. Pray with me these words of Amos over the country of Congo. Let justice roll down like waters and righteousness like an ever-flowing stream. Pray with me. Will you pray with me? Thank you. There's a third inequity that I would like to address. It has to do with the inequities in regard to education. Uh, some of you may know that uh, French is uh, 
the fifth most spoken language in the world. 21 of the 54 countries in Africa are French-speaking countries. 13 of those 54 countries use French as the primary language or the only language of instruction. So in Africa, there are 442 million French speakers, 24% of the population of Africa. And the Church of the Nazarene has presence in 18 of these countries. Praise the Lord. I'm grateful for the presence of the Church of the Nazarene. Thank you. Thank you for what you are doing to support missions around the world. Because you are supporting missions, God is making a difference. So we have presence in 18 countries. Uh, 18 countries, French-speaking countries in Africa. The church has nine institutions in Africa, but only one of these institutions offers a diploma in French. Uh, however, the Africa region does not have a, an, a, an institution that offers a bachelor's degree in French. And so I have observed some of these injustices of the, within the educational systems in the Church of the Nazarene. The English people have uh, all of the resources, have the ability to, uh, for educational opportunities, the access to advancement in leadership. But some of our French-speaking pastors um, have few options for education. And for many years, the Church of the Nazarene has been dreaming about having a, an accredited institution that will offer degrees for French speakers. In fact, uh, we, some of us first met in Dow Crow in 2002. That's been quite a long time ago, hasn't it? But you can see how long this vision has been alive. In order to devise plans for the new institution, but in October of 2019, I approached uh, Dr. Gomis, the regional director of the Africa region, who is himself uh, from Senegal, a French-speaking country. And I went to Dr. Gomis and I said to him, you know, we need to resurrect this idea of Fatin. Uh, Fatin is short for Faculté de Théologie de l'Église de Nazarene. That just rolls off your tongue, doesn't it? <laughs> but it's a, it's a school of theology that will raise the level of... Uh, it will raise the level of pastors in French-speaking countries throughout Africa. And so we, uh, we met in Côte d'Ivoire. Some of us met in, in Côte d'Ivoire. And uh, we, we had a meeting to lay plans for this institution. These discussions are still ongoing. I think you can pick me out in that photo, can't you? But they come. They come speaking to us in a language that perhaps many of us do not understand. Their voices have gone un unheeded, unheard for many, many years. Nous voulons comprendre. Nous voulons comprendre l'Église de Nazarien. Nous voulons comprendre sa doctrine, ses créances et son éthique. We want to understand. We want to understand the Church of the Nazarene, its doctrine, its belief, and its teachings. So the establishment of the Church of the, the establishment of Fatan, for me, is a matter of justice. I can't do much about the situation in Kenya, 
I can't do much about the, the war, the ongoing war in Congo. Oh, yes, I can pray, and I pray that you will now pray along with me. But I can do something about this need for an institution for too long the Church of the Nazarene has been Anglo-centric. We've been focused on English for too long. But I want to do what we can to right this injustice. I want to share it with you so that you can understand my heart. And I pray that God will enable us to accomplish the task. Some of you may be asking, well, what can I do? I think the first thing you can do is you can pray. Pray with us. Pray that God will enable us to, to raise up an institution that is going to make an impact upon a major portion of the population in Africa that will train pastors and send out missionaries. Some of them are going out and making an impact already upon the continent. But we want to empower them and enable them to do even more. You can help us to publicize that. And I think we have back at our table, we have a, uh, if you want to sign up either for our newsletter or for the FATAN uh, information, we, uh, we have uh, some, some uh, tablets back there where you can do that. But you can also give. And uh, you can also give to this new institution. We want to raise up an endowment that will endow this, this institution uh, for longevity. And so that's, that is the focus of what God has called us to do. And we would appreciate you joining with us to pray with us that God will enable us to see this institution come to fruition for the glory of God. I just want to thank you this morning for allowing us to be here. Thank you for allowing us to share with you our heart. And thank you. Uh, I believe that you are going to join us in prayer. I saw several of you nod. And I appreciate that kind of response. And it means so much to us. We have a video now that's going to uh, uh, reveal just a little bit about uh, African Nazarene University and uh, the impact of the university on the continent. Thank you. God bless you. Africa, a diverse continent from vast savannas to tall mountains and small villages to sparkling cities. It is a continent over 300 languages, nearly as many ethnicities, yet Africa faces many challenges, poor infrastructure, overclouding in the major cities, slums, poverty, and war. Our ministry focuses on the driving factors for change, education, and transformation. We are involved in education at African Nazarene University, FATAN, and training pastors at the Bible Institute level. The driving focus of our ministry is change. It is transformation. Perhaps the motto of Africa Nazarene University says it best. What begins here transforms the world. to be the agent of change. We want to develop our country. I want to transform people into Christ followers. We want to make a difference. We want to become examples for our generation and the future generation. I want to share the light of Christ in my country. We want to share the love of Jesus in word and deed. We want to thank you for your role in transforming Africa. Thank you for your prayers. Thank you for giving. Thank you for Sending, thank you for sending the treasures. Without you, we cannot. With you, we can. Together, we can transform the continent. Together, we can transform our world.
I don't have <laughs> the groove that they have. <laughs> but that's part of our church, right? Those are our brothers and sisters. And I can't imagine. Uh, yesterday was a kind of a um, change in our nation, hopefully for the better. But it's a reminder that there's a lot of evil and a lot of bad in this world. Um, the statistic 5.4 million people have died in the DNC war. We have an opportunity to reach them and uh, to help the Frasers. Um, and I, I, I like the acronym FATTEN. So I'm all about fattening up preachers. <laughs> but to teach a language that'll reach people with the good news of Jesus Christ. That's what it's all about. And that's why I'm glad that our tribe, the Church of the Nazarene in Christ's church, that we're sharing Jesus around the world. In about um, three weeks, four weeks, August the 4th, we're going to have Faith Promise Sunday. And Faith Promise is our Sunday where we receive pledges uh, for a year uh, to support the World Evangelism Fund. And that is the primary financial sourcing for our missionaries, not just here in the United States, but around the world. Folks like Russ and Carla, who we've had insight to what God has put on their heart and how they're sharing the good news. And so I want you to pray over the next four weeks. What, Lord, what do you want to give through me? How can I be part of sharing Jesus with French-speaking people in Kenya, uh, in the Congo, throughout Africa? I didn't know that. I didn't know that many folks spoke French. Now I do. Now I've got a responsibility. How can I help? What can I do? God will show us. I'm going to have the praise team to come. and We're going to finish by singing uh, a song. Uh, I will serve thee because I love thee. Um, again, I'm thankful for the Church of the Nazarene. And I'm thankful that God has given us resources to make a difference here in Martinsville and Morgan County, but also in Kenya at the African Nazarene uh, University and in churches that we may never go to, but we can be part of. Um, if you will, stand with me. Russ and Carla are going to be back at the table after the service. And again, if you will, as you go out, if you'll put a, a love offering in, in the plates, uh, all of that will go to the deputation of them being here with us this morning. And so let's have a word of prayer, and then we'll sing. And Lord, use me, use us. Father, we thank you for Russ and Carla. Lord, they're in our, our prayer, uh, our, our weekly bulletin. And uh, we as a congregation want to agree to pray for them uh, in, in establishing uh, French-based courses for ministers to be trained in sharing righteousness and holiness and the good news of Jesus. Be with them in the remaining time here uh, on their sabbatical and sharing what you're doing in their lives. And, um, Lord, we pray for Kenya. We pray for the Congo and uh, everything that's going on, the wars and rumors of wars. Uh, it's prophetic that in the last days, it's going to increase. But Lord, we're so thankful that our hope is not in a government or in politics. Our hope is in Jesus Christ and in who he is and how lives are still being transformed with his forgiveness and eternal life. And so be with us over the next four weeks as we pray about how to financially support missions and help us to go out into our world today and share who you are. We want to love and go. In Jesus' name we pray. Let's sing that song, I will serve thee because I love thee.
Father, we are so grateful for the opportunity you've made possible for us to be here today. And we are so grateful for the sacrifice that was made for us to give us life. Father, as we leave this place today, will you impress upon our hearts and our minds to keep these other countries in our prayers. And as we lift them to you, Father, we ask an extra special blessing to happen in those places. May we see the movement of Jesus Christ completely envelop this world. And we will give you praise for what you are going to be doing in the days ahead. We give you honor. We give you praise for the things you've done, the things you're doing, and the things you're going to do as we come before you in the strong name of your son, Jesus. Amen. You are dismissed.